after traveling to about, well not about, 45 states, I've seen many, many farms. In this video, I'm gonna talk about what to do if you want to become a professional farmer, if you actually want to get paid for growing food or something similar and selling it. I wanna to talk to you about two critical things that I think are absolutely necessary for your success. Now, it's gonna be difficult to succeed. It's very hard. Jason, I think, from Yonder Way puts it best. You're not just in the resale of, uh, side of food. You're in the, the production, the processing, the the then logistics the of getting it to people mm -hmm. and, and how, does, how does all that work and you do it in a timely manner and, and, and have enough product on the ground year round to be able to keep doing that. It'd be like somebody selling a ton of t-shirts. Like they're just great and I say, they sell millions of t-shirts and then they go, you know what? We should start growing our own cotton to cut, <laughs> you know, because that'll make our t-shirts better. They were in the retail t-shirt business. That's totally different than when you get into hmm. the 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 manufact like the actually we're gonna grow on crops, we're then gonna harvest it, process it, and then make our t-shirts. Like it seems so great, but once you see the complexities of all those sides when you tie it together, um, there's a huge learning curve. And while we're talking about Jason, I wanna make sure I say this. I think he nailed another key and I think it's that you have to love the whole process of, of what this is, you know, from beginning to finish and even to the point of handing our stuff to our customers. Like to me, that's like the stamp of it's completion. Like we raised it, we processed it, you're now bought it and we handed it to you. Mm -hmm. You won't get that at the grocery store. And so you have to love the process, not just the end result, not just the walking out with the rubber boots in the morning and seeing the beautiful view and all the chickens are wonderful and beautiful and they're letting out and somebody's, somebody's there with you enjoying it all and you have this joy, you sharing it with somebody. Those, that may be a high moment, but there is the process of building that chicken coop, of feeding them every day, including Christmas and Easter. Gotta fall in love with that process. So, but anyway, there are two points I wanna make and they're not necessarily glamorous, but it's something these successful farms all have in common. First on the list, Dennis from Full Circle Farm. Dennis from Full Circle Farm. We produce nutrient-dense foods so people can heal their bodies. Here is a working family all doing this farm together. I think he's pro that's probably why they're one of the most favorite people on the tour is because here's this normal family running a sizable farm. And what's special about them is they're growing dairy, pig, and beef, and, and vegetables for themselves and fruits they're probably 90 or more percentage of their own diet from the land. So they're growing a wide variety. I mean, you could go and live at Full Circle Farm and be okay and not have to leave. I mean, there's water and a variety of food, pro, uh, foods, protein, vegetables, and fruits. An amazing place. Second, I get, we gotta mention Joel Salatin. So we put in control oh my gosh. and we put in hydration yep. and that costs on average about 30 bucks an acre. The, the point is, if you can double production for an infrastructure cost of 30 bucks an acre. Been doing this for generations. Plethora of information out there on him. Up in Virginia, running cattle, chickens, pigs, doing it right, moving those animals regularly. I think what's very special about Joel is that not only he's doing it right, they were doing it right before there was a, before right was discovered. It's like they're part of that movement keeping the animals moved, keeping it sanitary, keeping the animals happy, giving them just one bad day, as Jason would say, from Yonder Way Farm. And what makes him stick out, I think, is that he's also an eloquent speaker and a great writer, so he's a natural talent for teaching. And so that's the reason we know about him, is because he's published so much. And so we can appreciate for him for that. And 
that may be part of his success is that he's doing something great but he's also teaching it which then grows his business and even expands his business outside of just farming which I should talk about that right here because I'm not necessarily going to talk about it in my two points at the end but I think that's key nowadays is that with social media where it's at is that you're sharing there you have a presence that you're creating something I know you're growing food but it's really not that much harder to document it for Joel he writes books he speaks for others like some of the other farms I'm going to talk about primal pastures and yonder way they're doing Instagram uh, some far oh, Curtis Stone is doing YouTube so what you'll notice I should have made this a third point about some of the things all these people have in common is that they uh, produce content surrounded surrounding what they're doing let's talk about Greg Judy your sole purpose in life should not be to own the land but to control the land uh, and boy I tell you what that one sentence hit me like a brick I bet many of you didn't know about Greg Judy till we went there and this is interesting because he leases 1600 acres guys I mean we talk about Curtis Stone leasing a third of an acre it's a whole nother ball game to uh, at least 1600 acres but you know what that means I guess there's no limit there's a full spectrum what do you want to do you want to do an urban farm and grow a lot of greens or do you want to have 300 head of cattle and I believe Greg Judy I could be wrong but I believe Greg Judy is selling his his revenue is selling at the market I mean I could totally be wrong but he's mastered that so well moving the cows four times a day guys sometimes 12 but every day four I think they might move them only three times on Sunday. <laughs> but it's so productive. He's quadrupled or more his acreage, his what he can get out of an acre. It's very profitable for him just to sell them at the market. So great solution for somebody who maybe isn't a people person, who maybe doesn't enjoy the marketing and just enjoys the production. But otherwise, I think he might be the exception there because otherwise, you're gonna have to be that man, you're gonna have to, or woman, you're gonna have to be that marketing person, you're gonna have to be that business person. Even Greg Judy's gonna have to be that business person for sure. So the farmer's gonna wear three different hats right there. I should mention that right now. The farmer is the producer and that he's growing the food. Then he needs to become the marketer and then he has to become the producer. That's a big job. I think, uh, going back to what Jason said, if you're selling t-shirts, that's like then becoming the grower of that cotton. That's intense. Nobody would even dream of doing that, but that's what we're doing in farming. Not, I'm not saying it can't be done. These are just six examples. We visited many others there who are making it happen. And in a minute, I'm going to talk to you about, talk to you about what ties them together. Two things that I've seen that you can easily do. It's not glamorous. It's hard. I shouldn't say easily do because it's hard, but it's easy to understand. You're not going to have to go to college and to do this, guys. You're not going to, yeah. You're not going to have to a lot of read a lot of books to do this. Uh, give that to you in a minute. Primal pastures out in Col Southern California. I was so sick of my job as an accountant. I was like, I'm out of here. I'm going to make this chicken thing work one way or another. But I got to get out of this cubicle. This is horrible. His story is so wonderful because he's a normal guy. He knew nothing about farming. I think they ha knew of it and kind of knew of a different way. And then, you know, because they were getting convicted about their food. And then from ordering 50 chicks to their house to five years later, 25,000 chickens at a time, a, whole, a wholesale business, an online retail business, shipping uh, to seven different states, going nationwide soon. That's nuts. And yes, anybody can do that. Is he doing it by himself? No, they have a team of their family and perhaps there's others involved maybe there's investors into the company things like that but that just shows you the wide variety of options start small build or bring in others to help you along you know maybe you're not maybe you don't want to be that marketing person but maybe you can bring somebody in to do that primal pastures bl blowing it up on on social media leveraging kickstarter to get some things started uh, i think they raised over fifty thousand dollars on kickstarter something nuts last night but not leastly yonder way farm guys saturday in the morning whatever that means means absolutely nothing anymore <laughs> absolutely nothing <laughs> after a rough night of just sitting around the fire pit <laughs> i hate mondays I mean, what's monday different <laughs> if you haven't do check out their farm i'm gonna leave links to all these guys and their farm videos down below but check out yonder way I, it's a crowd favorite they're a lot of fun they're down to earth they've grown their farm hard knocks didn't know about farm grew it slower over time and now have 4100 animals 
and have a couple employees, gives them um, the, some weekends off for doing the farm chores and stuff like that. Totally, all these are very different models. All these are beautiful models. Maybe you fit in one of these models or something else. But now let's just talk about the two things that I think tie these together that you can apply. One is that these guys learned from someone. Even Paul Greaves, jumping right into it, went and grabbed the Pasture Poultry book by Joel Salatin. Even if he didn't go to Joel Salatin's farm and learn from him, he learned from someone. So I encourage you to begin exploring what you think you want to do and begin getting books in that area. You want to be a market farmer, vegetables, check out Elliot Coleman, check out J.M. Fortier of uh, the market farmer. So they learned from somebody whether it's books, preferably in person. You see somebody that's a success, go. And don't just say, go, hey, you know, I want to come pick your brain. Don't do that. Don't do that. Say, hey, I want to go come and help you any way I can. Um, see if they have a volunteer program. See if they have an internship. Joel Salatin has an internship. Begin uh, commenting on their posts and just begin serving them in any, any way possible. Give, give, give. What you want to do is get your education by giving of your time to serve these people and then you'll get something back through experience, through maybe direct questions, through hopefully a friend that you could call up in a, in a, in a big time of need. So learning the hard knocks way, books, videos, uh, going to people who have been succeeding and learning from those people. So those people's books, those people's videos, and preferably going to those people's farms and learning from them. That's one of the number one keys that all those farmers had. The number two, they all started small. You know that? Now, some people like Curtis Stone stayed small and figured out how to do it on a third of an acre, but still, he started small. He was riding his bike, he you know, to deliver the stuff. He wasn't, he wasn't driving the car, he didn't have any employees, he wasn't teaching all that he's teaching right now, see? So start, they started small. I mean, Paul, uh, Paul Grieve, they ordered 50 chicks for themselves, thought they'd sell a few on Facebook, mentioned it on Facebook, ended up selling out of them, but moving on from there, because guess what? Paul Greaves could have done that and raised those chicks and said, you know what? We raised these 50 chicks and I didn't really enjoy that process. I didn't enjoy trying to line up customers. I didn't enjoy trying to deliver them. I didn't really enjoy growing them. Maybe I shouldn't do chickens. Maybe I should do something else or get out of it completely. Start small and you say, oh, I need 100 acres. No, 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 because if you can't do it with just selling some of your extra eggs from your egg layers, I'm afraid it's gonna be hard to jump. If you can't do it at that small, I'm afraid it's not gonna be done on that bigger scale. Don't wait and make that an excuse. Oh, I can do it if I get more acres. Don't. Start small. When we, were, when we got into Mark and Farm farming several years ago, what we wanted to do is grow some for ourselves, grow enough, and this is what Patera does, Appalachian Homestead, is grow more than what we need so that we can sell the extra and pay for the operation. So we were getting our meat and our eggs and our vegetables at no monetary cost. Now we were putting in the labor, but we were getting it at no cost. Go a little bit beyond that and start selling it and start making a profit and saying, why not, why not? You guys, you could do that. Even if you don't have land, you could lease land. And I'm not talking about paying big bucks for land. Even if you pay money for land, it's really not that crazy. Um, it's, it's very low considering that versus the cost of buying land. Uh, but many times, in Curtis Stone's case, Greg Judy's case, you can get it for free or for a trade. Hey, beautiful hey. one surprising us here at the end. You got, you got anything you want to add to this before I close it out? I don't think so. Okay, she's got nothing to add. I'm going to close it out. Good luck with those two things. Get yourself a mentor, hopefully in person, if not uh, in books and videos. And then start now. Start growing something now for yourself. Grow a little more so that you can sell it. Good luck with it all, guys.